Welcome to Beauty and the Mess. We have Jen Groover here with us today, serial entrepreneur, global speaker, and author of The More Method. Thank you for being here. I'm so happy to be here. I love you and your energy, so this is going to be a lot of fun. Yes, it is. And, you know, I, I can't believe I think we were just talking about, like, it's been three years since we met, and it literally seems like three months. <laughs> Yeah, it seems like forever ago and just yesterday at the same time. It exact. does. It does. Once you reconnect, like once once we were connecting, it just seems like it was yesterday. So, so honored to have you here. Um, I would love for you to just start with and share, you know, I've been following you and just love everything that you're doing and all you're creating and really who you are as a person. Thank and you. Love, yes. And I would love for you to share with everyone. Uh, a little bit about your background and how you got to doing what you're doing now to, you know, coming out with your new book, The More Method. So I like to address, you know, where everyone starts, right? So I'd say my dysfunctional childhood was a significant part of who I am and everything that I do today. Um, I was born into a household with an abusive alcoholic father who grew up in an emotionally unavailable family. Um, and then a very strong, sassy, mouthy Brooklyn, New York woman as a mother. And um, it was interesting because she was so strong and, and knowing everything I know now, especially around psychology, um, how this very strong woman could be um, wrapped up into this relationship that was so toxic and abusive and um, truly dim her light in the world. Um, and I watched it happen. And so I always set out to um, really understand all of that, why we do what we do and why people behave the way that they behave and, um, and, and then heal from my own journey. So I studied psychology in college. Uh, I became a national level fitness competitor right after college. And I just obsessively dove into all things human potential, all mindset training. I have got some of the best mindset trainers in the world as my mentors, um, Bob Proctor being one of the most significant ones to me. Um, and, and then I really dove into the spiritual path as well. Um, I was teaching yoga back in the late nineties before it was cool and you know, the hip thing to do. Um, people were like, what is this hippie thing that we're doing here? Um, and, and it really took me on a path of spirituality. Um, so that path of self-discovery for me, became a mechanism to teach other people. Um, everything I was learning, I was turning around and teaching on my platform. Uh, the platform then was more in the fitness industry. Um, as a national level fitness competitor, I traveled the world. I spoke at all these conventions and had access to thousands and thousands of people. And uh, I, I never felt like I was just teaching people how to be physically fit. I always felt like I was trying to teach people to be mentally and emotionally fit as well. And um, things just kept capitalizing from there. I put all the mindset training that I was taught into play and quickly became more and more successful in business. Um, in 2006, I launched a company having newborn twins. Uh, so most wow. people like, you started your company right after you had twins, which I did. My twins inspired it, um, which was the first ever compartmentalized handbag. And... Um, it was called the Butler Bag Company, and that company turned into a million dollars in the first year of business. It was on like QVC, right? Yep, it was, yeah, and all major retailers. And then it became 10 million in the second year of business. And that's what really was a, a tipping point for me in my career because so many people were like, wait, what are you doing? How are you doing this? This is not heard of for women-owned businesses. And so um, I got to really teach people and share all this mindset training that I was using was working for me. So it could work for other people, uh, especially coming from the background I came from. It wasn't, it wasn't typical at all for me to have that level of success or um, overcome the different experiences and trauma that I had to, to achieve at such a high level. Uh, and then I also really became clear as to breaking this, belief system that we have to be one thing, do one thing, and teach one thing for the rest of your life. And I became a multi-passionate, multi-talented entrepreneur. Um, I love that. 
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you because, you know, someone created this belief, pick, pick one thing and be that thing forever. Yeah. And I don't believe we're all supposed to be that. And maybe yeah. some people who really need laser focus and cannot multitask, that's, that's right. off. But so many of people Everybody. like, oh, right, right. We need to do multiple things or we start to wither away. So, yeah. um, but my number one thing of all things that I do is, is teaching, speaking, uh, teaching human potential, teaching people how to be the best versions of themselves, teaching people how to be the most expansive version of themselves and how to um, heal trauma so that they can do that. And we all have trauma. Um, I know it's not something most people talk about, but it's the trauma that keeps us stuck. And it's the trauma that uh, keeps people in a place that's less than their potential. And so uh, it's all relevant to each person. Everything's different. You know, what I experienced as a child might seem really profound to a lot of people. And for some people, it might feel like nothing. Um, but it's all relevant to me. It's all relative to my experience. And so I try to teach people whatever that, that trauma is for you, whatever that those belief systems were that were Put upon you that are limiting your abilities you need to remove in order to be the most expansive version of yourself and to watch that transformation unfold for everyone i work with is one of the most gratifying feelings in the world i love that so being that you like combined this path of personal training and and mindset and really uncovering, you know, I've, I found the, the same in my work that uncovering that core root of trauma is where the, where the healing lies. That look for you in your own all of this. All part of an evolution, really. It didn't, there wasn't like one moment where I was going this direction and then I shifted in this direction. It was just every new step was a catalyst for the next step, um, which I believe a lot of people do naturally. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, Right, right. They're not recognizing this evolution that's happening right. on the last step and the next step. And that's really what it was for me. I just kept building on where I was, you know, starting a fitness business right out of college, 1995, um, was, was the foundation. And then I started doing corporate wellness and that was the next level. And um, I went back and got my life coaching, even though my degree was already in psychology, life coaching was a new thing there. And I just kept doing things that kept unfolding what the next unfolding was going to be. And I unfortunately realized that too many people don't allow that to happen organically and they actually force a path that's not really their path. Um, and anytime I tried to force a path that wasn't my path on my path, I can tell you it fell apart drastically on its own. Yep, <laughs> it does. <laughs> it does because our ego is like, oh, we're supposed to go this way or so-and-so said I should do yeah. that. Yeah, I'm really listening to the guidance that's within us and letting it right. unfold naturally and organically and authentically to what our path and purpose is. And um, the more I healed, the more powerful I became to teach others. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, spirituality was a huge part of that for me. Um, becoming very self-aware, uh, really understanding emotional intelligence, which you know I passionately teach to others. Um, and, and using every hard, challenging experience that I have encountered as my teachable moment, um, you know, for everyone listening, you know, you and I were talking about 2019, just before we got on here and 2019, even though I've done all this work and I teach all this work, 2019 kicked my butt. And so many different ways, shapes, and forms. And I, whole time through it, kept thinking, wow, I'm being forced to go to the next level. This is my next level training. In the mess of it all is my next level training. And I, I could choose to go to the next level by the self-discovery that comes through it, the lessons that are meant to be learned, the perspectives that are supposed to be gained, or I could be a victim to all of it, which a lot of times people do do, and that's Right. Unfortunately, where they stop their evolution, the, because they become a victim, they become in too much of a state of trauma and not working through the trauma, not having the tools right. to work through the trauma often. Right. Um, we're not taught those tools. I mean, a lot of people stay there because they don't know there's another way. 
right? They don't know the tools. They don't know what they don't know. Right. That's why it's my life mission as I know that it is yours to just have my megaphone be as big as possible to keep telling people there are tools and, yeah. and you can use these tools to heal, to evolve, to enjoy life. And even when the hard times come, we can still be an essence of joy and find joy and gratitude and, and be able to manage the challenging times a little bit more effectively than without having those tools, which is horrendous. I can't even imagine having lived through 2019 without having the tools that I had. Yeah. And I, I just got chills when you said that, because like you said, knowing the work and have, having had done the work and then still seeing how we all go through that ebb and flow of life and have to use our own tools is so powerful and really beautiful. Yeah. And I, I love, you know, I mean, you've been a huge inspiration to me to be more of a megaphone. I love that uh, analogy. Yeah. But you truly speaking to that and, and being a voice that, you know, you can learn all this and it doesn't just stop here. It's continued work and practice. That doesn't yeah. mean it has to be hard. It just means that you've got to stay on the path and, you know, continue to tr trust and put your tools into place to move through it, knowing that the hard times like you said, the mess also has beauty. Yeah. yeah. And, and there's, there's times where your tools are going to have to be sharpened. And mm -hmm. it, while it sometimes just feels terrible as it's happening, you can look it back. Sure I, can, I can even now, 15 minutes into the new year, be thankful for the tools that were sharpened for me in 2019. It's still becoming clear to me as to what other sharpenings have happened. Um, but I think one of the things that I've honed in on um, as one of my big lessons of 2019 is really deepening my practice of forgiveness. And um, when, when it's one thing to forgive somebody on a superficial level, but when there's like deep rooted betrayals and um, there's things that are beyond your comprehension and to forgive that for yourself, if nothing else, um, for your own health and wellness, uh, for your own evolution, to me is probably going to be one of the biggest takeaways that I have um, and, and gain power from. I'm, not, I'm still not fully through the process of forgiveness, um, but I'm working on it and I feel stronger in it. And I feel like that's probably going to be my next book after this. The more method is is probably gonna wind up being a book about forgiveness and using all the emotional intelligence I teach in the Moore Method to go to the next level of like, when someone really betrays you, how do you not only heal for yourself, but how do you even step into a place of compassion and empathy for the other person? Yeah, it's for our own soul's evolution because at the end of the day, we don't know, nor should we know that person's journey and what they've signed up for in this lifetime, you know? So I love that you touched on that, that it's really for our own, our own heart and evolution, uh, which is, you know, a completely different perspective than the norm. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's a, an entire mindset shift on how to navigate relationships in our life, whether it's intimate, colleagues, family, regardless. Um, and, and, it's all and, and it's And it's complex. It's very complex. It's not black and white. It's not cut and dry. It's very complex. Like one of the people that betrayed me this year, um, you know, I understand did so based on their limitations of healing their own trauma and Fair. blocking self-awareness. And I don't think they set out to cause the damage that they did. Um, but because of their lack of awareness and their lack of healing caused this damage. And, and I understand where the damage came from in their childhood. Um, but it's one thing for me to understand it and for them to do the work to fix it, right? Um, but, but because I understand that I don't carry hatred or anger the way that a lot of people do, um, I actually carry compassion and empathy. And, um, that's really hard for people to understand. It's 
been hard for my friends to understand and wrap their head around. And um, it's just, I, I really feel like that's my next level of work and teaching. And that's why I had to do all this crazy stuff to, to really not just talk about it in theory, but actually talk about it in practice. I, I love that. And I, I love that you're expressing how your friends don't understand because I hear that over and over with my clients. You know, I work, work with quite a bit of women have, who have experienced betrayal in their relationships. And a lot of times the family and friends don't understand the forgiveness and compassion and ability to walk away from a place of empowerment and love and forgiveness. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of times where you just have to think to yourself, that's okay if they don't understand. Yeah. You know, this is the, uh, my, my life's evolution and, you know, I'm going to continue to walk forward. So, and, you know, nothing has meaning until we give it meaning. So if we want to continue to give meaning to things that disempower us, it's only holding us back. And if we want to give things meaning that empower us, it, it thrusts us forward. And to me, to, to give a meaning that's something that's going to thrust you forward is so important where people get stuck is in their ego. Like, how can you forgive that person? How could I ever forgive somebody for doing right. this? It's, it can, it's unforgivable. And that is just so ego driven. And I get it. Pain sucks. And, um, you know, betrayal right. sucks and uh, all of it isn't fun. But when we can shift to that place of understanding, you know, my father, I opened up with, you know, he was an abusive alcoholic when I was a child that came from his childhood. It was projected on him. He didn't set up in this world and hope to be in an abusive childhood. He didn't have the tools to change that course for himself. Men back then weren't seeking right. to be these heightened self-aware men to uh, protect and provide for their families other than financially. So um, he lacked the tools to change that course for himself. But I still have really a lot of compassion and empathy for the fact that for him to have become the man he was, he had to sustain a lot of abuse to be that person. Um, so instead of being angry at him and holding um, resentment to him not being the type of father I would have desired, I number one, ex accept that I signed up for this contract before yeah. I entered this lifetime yeah. to have a father like that, to become who I needed to become but also have compassion and empathy for him, especially later in life, when I could see him beginning to long for these deeper rooted relationships that didn't exist for him because he had pushed so many people away. And I could see the relationship I have with my children that he never got to have with his children. And so um, to shift that energy, my own energy and my own alignment from anger and resentment to compassion and empathy is so powerful. That is beautiful. Oh, it gives me chills. Thank you. So as you've navigated becoming an entrepreneur through changing lives, what would you say to the person that is just beginning that wants to do something more meaningful and have more purpose? And, you know, I, I always see entrepreneurship in a sense as a path of personal development, right? Yeah. You're throwing a whole new set of conflicts within yourself and beauty within yourself that, that is right in front of you to navigate. Uh, what would you say to that person that wants to do something to make the world a better place? Um, so I always say entrepreneurship is a journey of self-transformation because you have to look at yourself in the mirror every single day and call yourself out on your stuff in order to get to that next level. So it forces you to have to do the personal development, to have the professional development, which I think is such a gift in that journey. Um, and it's also why a lot of people might become successful entrepreneurs and then lose it all because they didn't do the work and they might have been able to use willpower to get to that level of success, but all the demons within them still existed and why they go up and why they go down. Um, Same. But I believe uh, what I see as the hindrance for people often holding them back from their authentic path and their passion. And their, if you have this desire, it's something that you are meant to do. If you feel this 
yearning to go in this direction of doing something meaningful and purposeful, it's because it's part of your purpose. So know that first and foremost. And the self-doubt that I don't have enough skills, I don't have enough training. I believe that the biggest skills and training are the life experiences. So my degrees in psychology is nothing, literally nothing compared to the life experiences and digging myself out of my own holes and all the self-taught stuff, all the reading of all the spiritual information and applying it to myself. That to me is where a teacher really exists. That's where the meaningful work really exists. There's a quote I just posted yesterday. Um, I'm going to look at it real fast so I don't mess it up. But it really, it really summed up what I believe was my life and my life purpose is it is, um, God said to me, I'm going to show you pain. And then you are going to help other people who are in pain because you understand it. So there's a lot of therapists in this world, psychologists and, and, and psychiatrists who haven't lived through the pain, right. who haven't dug themselves out of holes and are teaching theory. And while they might have more degrees, I would not take their advice more than I would take it from right. somebody who has lived through it and, and overcame it. Um, so, you know, I, the biggest thing I think is don't allow self doubt to sabotage the direction you feel pulled to go into, because if you're feeling pulled, I firmly believe it's part of your purpose and, um, your purpose is, is a gift to somebody else. I love that. Thank you. On the personal end, you know, kind of flipping back and forth between personal and professional, I think, you know, they're, they're so um, deeply intertwined. What would you say for someone in their personal life that they can put into motion to support and like kind of build that foundation for entrepreneurship? Constantly be learning, constantly be growing, growth every day. There should be growth, a growth strategy watching videos, reading books, going to workshops, surrounding yourself with people that, who inspire you, who are ahead of where you are in the experience. Um, I know a lot of people like to stay safe in their old circles of friends. Um, well, safe yes, friends. And, and at home as well. You know, a lot of people will keep themselves stuck trying, mm -hmm. like literally trying to just sit at home on the computer, figuring it out. And Yep. I, you know, it creates more isolation. So I love what right. you're sharing about yeah. getting out. Getting out, networking events, anything that you're exposing yourself to that's giving you a sense of, of discomfort is growth, right? Um, but every day there should be something. If you work out, listen to a podcast while you're working out. If you're driving in your car, listen to something, be learning, be growing all the time, be evolving. And that doesn't just come with what you're putting in, but also, like I just said, who you're surrounding yourself with and what you're immersing yourself in. Um, you could learn more in one year than most people are learning in 20 years by just having that as a daily strategy. I, I love that. And speaking of leaving 2019 behind and opening to 2020, what do you recommend for just anybody and everybody? What have you done for yourself? What do you you know, inspire people to do, to really start this incredibly new year and new decade off to really live, live on purpose. The things that I talk about in the More Method book that I do also myself is constantly auditing the beliefs and behaviors that I have that are blocking me from getting where I want to go. So there's a signal for everybody. It's a secret that I'll share with everyone right now. Whatever outcomes you have in your life right now that you do not like, whatever they are, there are undoubtedly beliefs attached to them or you would not be getting that outcome. So when you discover the outcomes you don't like, you start to audit them by what beliefs do I have that are causing this outcome to continue? So let's just say it's around money. So, you know, keep hitting this roadblock, never having enough money, never hitting, you know, certain level goals. What are your beliefs around money? What are your beliefs around success? 
What, what were your parents teaching you about money? What was the conversation going on in your home about money? Um, what, what are your fears around success? A lot of people fear success. And really constantly evaluating um, what those beliefs might be. And then once you discover what the belief is, you want to flip it. So if the belief is, and this is a very obvious basic one, but if there's not, you believe there's never enough money, to flip it is abundance is everywhere for me to access. And that new belief becomes what I call an affirmation that you need to say to yourself all day, every day, for a very long time to reprogram your brain, creating new neural pathways in your brain. And uh, that becomes a practice of constantly auditing the beliefs because your beliefs then create your behaviors. So people try to change behaviors without changing beliefs. It's like why everyone goes to the gym on January 2nd, year after year, by January 15th, they're no longer there anymore. Yeah, um, I wait for January 15th to come around <laughs> before I put it there. But it's because they never changed the beliefs around exercise and the beliefs around right. a healthy lifestyle and the beliefs around eating healthy. So they're just basically fighting <clears throat> willpower at that point to have success in their new goals. Mm -hmm. So to me, what I consistently do, 2020 or any year is when I'm getting clear as to my goals for the year ahead, really evaluating what beliefs might I still hold that are blocking me. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. So the more method, where can we find it? So it will be live on Amazon, <clears throat> um, on my website as well, jengriver.com, um, as well as themoremethod.com. What date is it available? It will be available on January 22nd. Lots of stores too. So if you're traveling in airports and things like that, keep an eye out for it. Awesome. I love it. Thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. And My pleasure. I love hearing your story, your continued journey, all that you're doing to help and inspire others. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I'm grateful for everyone who's listened. And I really hope that you all uh, can use this information as an opportunity to break free of the self-limited beliefs and behaviors that might have been blocking you to get more of what it is that you desire in life. And I might want to really hit home that it's not always about money in the bank, which is amazing to have that freedom. But a lot of times what we really need more of, what we really desire more of, that can get us the bigger things, starting with the more simple things of just more inner peace more happiness, more energy, more intimate connections. Aren't and those crazy? things could actually be the catalyst yeah. to the better things you've been seeking. Yeah, I truly believe that. I feel like it's a peace in our heart ignites everything else. And when you take the steps to experience that, there's no going back. You know, you experience that different way of life. It takes on its own momentum. Yeah, it does. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. You're welcome. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us on Beauty and the Mess. Feel free to visit Robin on Instagram at Robin underscore Emmerich. Keep on living your beautiful life and embrace the mess.